So, got a Tucson. All right. So, this is kind of an upgrade video. Not kind of. I mean, so, there's one of these in here, but it's a little different. I, I don't know that we would agree that it's an upgrade, but we'll see. We'll get through it. But this is the TS-283. And what a phenomenal knife. Man, that's cool. It's a long design. This particular one is M390 steel. And, man, I bought this thing a long time ago. And so, I mean, looking at this, you kind of go, well, how could, they, how could you upgrade that? Well, here's the thing with this knife. These copper scales that are on this titanium make this thing weigh, I don't know, it's six and a half. It, it's well over six ounces. I, I say that, but, I mean, it's just heavy. How about that? It's a heavy knife, and it's expected to be, man, with all that copper. So this is a TS-283 with G10 liners instead of the copper and 14C28 steel. So the steel's downgraded. Uh, the, the scale inserts are downgraded, but the weight is downgraded. So that's why I'm saying it's kind of an upgrade because... That's not really, car this knife isn't really carryable to me. It's just too heavy, man. There's too much going on there. And even with this pocket clip, which is pretty nice, it runs pretty good. I, this thing just, man, it'll sag a pocket. So I'm hoping, because I do like the knife, I'm hoping that this is an upgrade. That it's lighter, it's uh, easier to carry. And it may, I may be able to take this design and put it in my pocket. That would make me happy. Okay, let's get rid of all this. We'll wipe off that initial surface oil. Let's get this over here. Give us plenty of room to work. I mean, this G10 on here, it could definitely fall into the category of you love it or you hate it. I mean, baby blue, sort of like on a candy stripe level, maybe a barbershop pole. Yeah, it's like, it's out there. All right, let's get it, let's run it. Yeah, so it's got a stonewash blade instead of a satin blade. But other than that, the scale's the same. The, the actual scale's the same, the insert's the same. Uh, it doesn't have the line milling. These aren't milled that way. And it does have a texture to it. I don't know that I can pick that up. There's a texture on that G10. I don't know that I can get it close enough to, to pick it up, but boy, you can sure feel it. It feels wonderful, grippy. Um, it's on both sides. Very nice. Nice pocket clip. Um, yeah. Uh, stonewash blade though, instead of the, uh, satin with the M390. And it's lighter. Considerably lighter. But it's the exact same knife. So... Very cool. Let me run that action and see where the action's at. So there's definitely a difference in the action. The action on this one is smooth, man. Yeah, very smooth. Refined. It's got a refined, smooth action. This one... The knife feels light, the blade feels light, and that action feels, I'm going to say, bound up. Yep. Yeah, it's not, it's not the greatest action. 
So I'm going to quit fiddling around with it. Let's get in it, take it apart, see if we can check it in, see if it uh, needs cleaning and or tuning. See if we can't improve that action because it's not, it's not very impressive at this point. So much so that there's no reason for me to keep running it because I'm not impressed. It feels like the blade's too light to function properly. Um, yeah, I'm not sure. Lots of, lots of oily oily in here. I don't really see any dirt in these bearings. But they're definitely oily, so we're going to clean all that up. Um, I do believe... I'm going to be careful and get this racetrack bearing out of there. And we're going to push this through because we want to get these scales off. For sure we do. Because I already know, man, there's oil behind them. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, look at, look at the amount of oil back there. I mean, you can leave that behind in your knife, but... I got to get it out of there. It drives me nuts. Yeah. I mean, look, look here. Come on, focus, man. There we go. Oof. It's like that's a river, a river of oil. All right, let's clean it up. Won't take us long and we'll get her back together. But yeah, the action, I mean, it's not wowing me for sure. It's underwhelming. And uh, I didn't check it for blade play or none of that, but it, um, if anything, the detent is pressing too hard against the blade and it's causing friction and slowing everything down. It's not that it's not enough. So we'll see. I, hey, I've been shocked before where I'm cleaning it up and I put it back together and I'm thinking, well, I didn't really do anything right there to improve anything. So I don't really inspect any improved results. And lo and behold, the knife like drastically improves. So we'll see. Yeah, so I was saying this blue, man, you either love it or you hate it. Like... Like, I don't know, it's a, it's a far out there country, uh, color for sure. And uh, nothing screams badass knife like uh, some shades of blue and white. <laughs> I mean... Will strike terror and fear into the hearts of many. Uh... <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's clean up this mess in the center of the work table. Here we go. Let's put it back together. Let's get busy. I think it's this one. Uh, am I backwards? Yeah, must be. Okay, there we go, pivot, and we'll get this one in while we're open, okay, got two pivot pins, they're both still kind of captured this one back here and then there's one for the lanyard there and then the stops are internal stop pins so yeah I mean all in all it's a pretty solid built knife uh, I, I just the action between the two knives night and day night and day 
And I mean, I don't see any reason in here for it to not run. Um, we'll see. I mean, it could be a couple of things. The pivot could have been too tight. And it's beyond taking the play out of the blade and it's it's putting pressure on it. Or it could be the detent is too strong. And it, I mean, it looks pretty strong. Even just where it's at, it could be causing friction. Um, I mean, I changed it just a hair. So now if it's too soft, well, it's on my, I, I can not blame Tucson. I can definitely say it's my fault. Uh, what am I missing? Nothing. It's all good. Okay. Where is... Oh, there it is. It's trying to escape. Wow. Nice. Got caught at the fence line. I mean, it's better. And with the thumb, I still feel a reasonable amount of detent there. And the action is definitely improved. It's not quite this one, but it's close. Yeah, it's getting better too. Let me check for play. No, nope, solid as a rock. Okay, so I'm going to put all this away, do a final wipe down on the table, and then we'll get an impression here. Is this an upgrade or a downgrade or what are we doing here? So the action is way improved now. Yeah, it just, I needed to take just a little bit off that lock bar, change up that detent just, just slightly. And now, every way to run this knife runs really well. And it's almost drop shut. Just one little coax, and it's home. So it runs way better. I mean, it's a great example of, I don't know. I mean, was the detent pin, was this pivot uh, screw too tight? Maybe. <clears throat> when I took it off, I don't remember it being tight. But something was causing this knife to be bound up. And it's not now. It's running wonderfully. So much so that I'm going to check it again for for play. Make sure that I'm tight. You know, because man, it's running really, really well now. Really happy with it. Okay. Uh, ergonomics. Grip. So, man, this is just one of those that it is so comfortable here. They've done such a nice job rounding all these edges and creating space for fingers. There's not a huge finger guard there, but man, I dig this knife. And part of the reason is this jimping on a backspacer, really aggressive, man. It's some bitey stuff. So to get up in this, I don't, you know, this ramp area with the two thumb studs, it's just such a good perch for a thumb. And the rest of this just molds in my hand. That I'm going to say this is perching above confident. 100% that's confident. Wet hand, whatever. Man, this is this grip's maintaining. Like, this ain't, this ain't coming out. And uh, with this aggressive blade and what it is, man, this thing qualifies for self-defense carry for me. And, I mean, I'm going to answer the big question here in a minute. But, yeah, the ergonomics, the grip on that are wonderful. And just FYI, this one too. This knife's thicker 
than this knife, I believe. Maybe not. I mean, they're exactly the same. So, but this one feels thicker. I can't explain it. Maybe it's just it feels heavier, but both of them have really soft edges, just really comfortable in the hand. And I would say the same thing about this grip. It's just really good. I, You know, maybe one of the differences is this G10 right here, it's got a grit to it. it. There's a grip that's being provided there where this is smooth and slick. So I do think that this is the better grip. Uh, pocket clip. Let's check it out. Let's check it out. It's checked in. We're going to check it out. All right, here we go. Thick pants, thick material, nice ramp on the pocket clip. Goes right over it and goes all the way home. Leaves this nice, uh, unintimidating blue and dark blue and white. Yeah, nice. I like it. Okay, how about the thinner material? Yeah. One-handed, super easy in the pocket. How about my corner pocket? Eight ball in the corner pocket out here where I carry. Yeah, it's just butter. Wonderful. Perfecto. Okay. I dig it. I like it. So, I don't remember this knife, but we're going to find out right now. We're going to check it for safety. Uh, okay, so... You know, that's a fail. I could touch that, that blade from right there to right there. Just all the way across there. And that's just putting my finger on it. So if this was in my back pocket, I mean, for me, carrying in that outside back pocket, this is on the opposite side of where I'm reaching. But if you carried this in the front pocket to the outside corner, I'm going to illustrate it. Because, I mean, I'm about to be pretty critical of the knife and the designer and the manufacturer and, you know, all that. Because here's a pocket knife, in my opinion, that's not safe in your pocket. So if you were to put this in this outside right front pocket, well, if you reach down in there, for whatever reason, your keys or you got some money, if you reach down in there and your finger was to go in this space, you could be severely cut. It's not safe reaching in that pocket with that exposed blade. Yeah, I mean, okay, so that's a fail. What about this tip? So, yeah, I mean, I'm trying pretty good, and I can't get it. So I'll pass the tip, and I'm passing the clip. Clip's pretty good. But this uh, back area here, they've left the blade exposed, and all they had to do was run this backspacer up, and protect that blade. I, I don't know if this saved like $2 in the manufacturing of the knife. I'm not really sure or because they'd have had to pin it, you know, but that's all it is. It's a pin here and then the one screw here. It's just a pin right there. So they could have extended this backspacer to right here. They could have pinned it here and here and it would have never moved and it honestly would have made the knife more stable but then there's no way to contact that blade in your pocket. So, yeah, it's disappointing, man. It's really frustrating because here's a knife that I really like. Um, and it's not, it, it can potentially cut me in my pocket. And I don't like pocket knives that can cut me just by reaching in my pocket. And that's what this one can do. So, yeah, it's a bummer, man. Um, price and availability. I mean, it's just brought me down now. Really nice knife. I'm excited. It weighs way less than the other one. And to me, I was going to say, hey, this is an upgrade. 100% this is an upgrade. And it's going to get pocket time. I dig the blade shape. It's aggressive. I kind of dig the the blue and the subtle colors. I mean, I'm I'm kind of down for all that. But then I find this safety feature, and you know what? I don't care about any of that now. Yeah, this this one's a fail, too. Yeah, same. So, I mean, it's designed and or, and or manufactured that way. So, I don't know. 
Is that Wong? Wong, did you did you plan? Did you look at that and go, yeah, it doesn't matter if you can touch that. Or did you say, hey, that needs to be lower or that backspacer's got to come up here. And then Tucson went, you know what? We could save $2. We're not pinning that and we're just going to stop it back here. Simple backspacer. I, I don't know. I don't know what went down, but it's really disappointing, man. It's frustrating. Um, and I said this in a video a while back, man. It's it's stuff like this that makes me want to just take my whole collection. Because I, I'm going to say, I don't know, is 20% of the Tucson knives fail these simple safety checks? 20, 30? I don't, you know, I don't know. Maybe I should go through it, but... I, you know, I don't need to bring that much heartbreak into my world and go, yeah, man, 30% of my Tucson collection can't pass simple in-the-pocket safety checks. You know, like if you reach in your pocket, it can cut you. Ugh, man, I know I'm harping on that lately, but I've just had so many of them that are nice knives that, I mean, in so many ways are awesome. And I just really like them. I want to like them. And then I go, hey, let me check it for safety. And it's like, ugh, frustrating, man. So anyways, thanks for listening to my rant again. But listen, I, I collect two sons and I do reviews on a bunch of them. So are you going to hear me run down this road again? Yep. Because guaranteed in all these two sons I got to go through, I, we're going we're gonna to talk about it again. Guaranteed we are. Uh, this one. TS-283, 14C-28N. Um, it is available. This one's available on White Mountain Knives for about 75 bucks. So is that a fair price? I think so. I mean, 14C-28N, it's all titanium. And this G10, I mean, that's not a strike, man. That's pretty nice stuff. I like it. The color, again, that's kind of controversial because they could have easily went with like a red and a black or something, you know, black uh, and kept that basically a neutral perspective. But I, I'm digging the blues and the whites. I like it. It's different. Um, the, the weight difference on these, this one comes in with the M390 and the brass. This one comes in about 5.8, just, just shy of six ounces. And this one is about four and a half. So it's about one and a half ounces lighter for this one. Eh, not quite one and a half, you know, one and a quarter ounces, but definitely a full ounce lighter. So, I mean, there you go. Uh, can you find them on eBay running on auctions? I mean, they've been selling them. So, I mean, maybe you can find one there. Uh, what did I pick it up for? I picked this one up for $60 on a live auction. So, yeah, pretty pretty happy about that. All right. Well, I appreciate you watching. Take care, y'all. Oh, hey, does it cut? Did I check it? I didn't check it. Let's see. Come on, man. Surely that blade is a laser beam. Yeah, look at that thing, man. Whoop. Yeah, crazy sharp. How about we back it up with the one that I've owned? Yeah. Yeah, pretty, pretty, pretty sharp, y'all. All right, appreciate you watching. <laughs> Come on. All right, take care. See ya.